So now resuming with part two of the communication skills video where earlier I was sharing with these bright students from GNA University Hospitality School about the four stages. How many? Four stages. So there are no shortcuts. You have to go through four different stages to master any new skill, whether it's being a, uh, better at getting better at communication skills or learning a foreign language or learning how to drive an automobile. There is no shortcut. You must go through these four stages. Stage number one is when you're unconscious incompetent. Stage one is unconscious incompetent. This is the stage where you can say ignorance is bliss. I don't even know the skill exists. I am unconscious about my lack of the ability or of the skill. I'm unconscious and at the same time, I am incompetent about it. I don't know this thing exists, nor do I know how to do it. Get the point? I don't know what it feels like to drive a car. I'm unconscious about that. And I don't know how to drive a car. I should not be getting inside a car on the driver's seat, okay? I don't know there is another language called English. I'm unconscious about it. And I don't know whether I can speak it or not. This stage is where ignorance is bliss. Means I don't know that this thing exists, so I don't know at the moment. The second stage is a very crucial stage. It is when you become conscious about the skill, you get to know about the skill, but you are still incompetent. You, have, you don't know the skill yet, but you have become aware that something like this exists. You don't know how to speak a foreign language, but you become aware about how it feels when you might learn that language. You don't know how to drive a car yet, but you're sort of getting the feeling what it might feel like of when I will be in the driver's seat. So now what has happened from stage one to stage two, we have moved, there is greater awareness. There is greater awareness. awareness. In your notes, please write down, awareness is the first step of change. Let's be very clear about this. Awareness is the first step of change. So we will now resume with the third step of the mastery of any new skill of learning how to drive an automobile or learning a new language, improving your communication skills, improving your English language skills. So we've talked about the first level was I was unconscious about the skill and I was also incompetent. Stage two, I developed more awareness. I moved to more consciousness. I became aware, but I am still incompetent. I still don't know how to do it. Stage three, not, so remember I told you how Awareness is the first step to change. Now, this is the catalyst, but hard work is going to come in at stage three, where I've now become conscious and aware, and at the same time, I am gaining competence. This is where most people require the maximum efforts. This is where they will may face the maximum internal resistance. This is also where most people will quit. You know why? In the driving of a car, for example, there's going to be a time when you have to check, am I in the second gear, am I in the third gear? In the night, you'll have to check, oh, is that the brake pedal or is that the accelerator or is that the clutch or what it is, right? Same with those driving two wheelers. Shall I use the brake or shall I just put my feet down? <laughs> what should I do? You are thinking about it. You have to think before you do it. Same with communication skills. Same with English language mastery. Stage three, which is conscious and competent, you've, you've, you've started learning, but you have to use, it, it puts a lot of strain on your mind. You have to think of every single word before it comes to your mind. Just like you have to think of every single thing, like you're cooking, for example. You learned a recipe, you didn't know good food exists. You're at stage one. Right? You went to somebody's home, you enjoyed a nice biryani or a nice dish. You're at stage two. Wow, there is something called good food. I don't know how to cook it, but I know there is something called good food. Stage three, you read a recipe, you go step by step, you're sweating, everything has to be, three ml means three ml. It cannot be 3.5, right? So you're conscious, you're competent. You'll make a decent biryani, but you will sleep for the next two days because <laughs> you were so stressed, okay? This is what stage? Stage three. If you don't quit, Deep breath in, please. Give somebody a fist bump sitting next to you and remind them, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. So for people who do not quit at stage three, are the ones who will go to stage four. 
What is stage four? Unconscious competence. This is magic stage. I'm now competent, but it happens subconsciously. I now can go on a stage and speak, but I don't need to put in too much efforts into it. It happens by itself. I actually let go of the control. I can now make a nice biryani or a nice dish. I don't need to measure the ingredients. I can just, I know, I know, I know. It's the stage of knowing is stage four, the stage of knowing. I'm spe st speaking in front of a camera and I know. But the problem is, you look at somebody at stage four, okay? You look at a chef at stage four, you look at a communicator at stage four and you say, wow, this person was born this, like this way. He or she was born special. He or she was born a chef. In fact, the moment in the emergency room after the C-section operation, he came out, he told the nurse, bring a frying pan and some masalas and I'll cook something. <laughs> That's how inborn it was to him. Nobody's born that way. Or he or she was a born good communicator. In fact, when he was one year old, he started giving motivational talks, right? And he was three years old, he was asked by the uh, national, um, one of the major political parties to come and do campaigning for them. It doesn't work that way. We look at somebody at stage four and say, wow, God, you were born special. What you do not see is stage one, stage two, stage three. Even our friends with the, with the camera crew today, I'm sure they've been through stage one. Where they looked at the camera and they didn't know what button is what. And then they started experimenting, they became aware, and then they started thinking and doing it to now where it flows, where it flows. Would you like to take your skills to a level where it flows? Yes or no? Yes. Then you have to go through where you get stuck. <laughs> In order to get to the stage where it flows, you must go through the path where you're getting stuck again and again and again. That's how you get to a stage where everything is flowing automatically and in, uh, in that sort of rhythm. Now, I'm reminded of a funny example um, where, you, you know, people compare with little kids, especially with a foreign language, and especially here in India with like the competency of English language is a big thing. <laughs> so one of my friend's grandmother, <clears throat> they had a family come over from Canada, all right? And they had like three or four year old kids. Now, of course, they were born in Canada and they're Canadian citizens. They're of Indian descent, but they're Canadian citizens. They were born there. So they were, of course, talking in English. So his grandmother says, says to my friend, who is 18 years old, Tenu Sharmani Chaidi hai. Ah, dek, tin tin saal de bache. Inni soni ingrechi bolte hai. Look at these kids, they're three years old. They speak better English than you do. And he's trying to tell his grandmother, Grandmom, they were born there. They were, they, you see how kids learn language? How do they learn? How do they learn? You're not sure, you should go ask your parents. Some kids learn how to abuse at a very young age. Where do they learn that? <laughs> Friends, at home, kids learn by observation, yes or no? Yes. They learn by absorbing what's happening in their environment. They are not taught an actual lesson, right? So, what kids they have is immersion. What they have? Immersion and early exposure. So, what is happening around the world is a wonderful phenomena. There are British um, uh, cartoon series called Peppa Pig yeah, for little kids. You heard about it? Are you watching it? There's no harm. <laughs> a lot of kids across the world are speaking in a British accent. Thanks to this one cartoon series which is called Peppa Pig. Okay. Interesting thing is, people sitting in Indian villages don't know English, young kids are speaking in English. British accent, thanks to Peppa Pig. What are they having is early exposure. What do they have? Early exposure. Now, Bill Gates, they say, had uh, exposure to a computer. He had access to a computer in one of the libraries where I believe one of his parents was the professor in that university. That, com that library got one of the first computers in that part of the uh, country. And he could go in and spend day in, day out there. Early exposure helps. But if you did not have early exposure to, let's say, a certain language or to a better style of communication skills, you can make up with immersion. And I'll talk about that in detail, right? If you did not have early exposure, you can make up the deficit through immersion because there is something in your mind which is called neuroplasticity. In your brain, it is called neuroplasticity, which means your neurons are plastic. 
neural connections are plastic, which means regardless of the age, you can learn a new skill. Right? And that depends upon your ability to exert your brain into new directions. They've done brain scans on taxi drivers in London. It is a very difficult test if you want the license of a taxi driver in London. Because they don't rely on GPS, you have to memorize every street in your mind. And then for years and years they drive this. And what they found out in the brain MRI scans is the part of the brain responsible for spatial intelligence of location is way bigger, three times the size of another person. Which means, once again I come back to that, your brain will change according to your priorities. Let me repeat this please. My brain will change according to my priorities, according to the directions in which I'm putting in efforts. If you are using a lot of social media all the time, you're like a zombie. You are in a trance, hypnotic state. Huh? Boom, you hit somebody, you don't even know. You're like, somebody called, ah, oh, yeah, that, that, that's right. You're like this, you, you've seen people this, in this state? their brain is going to change accordingly. Just like the confusion on their screens and in their minds, the same confusion is going to go into their brains and then in their life. And then they'll wake up three years later and say, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? They wasted three years of just looking at the photographs of other people, <laughs> which are carefully selected, filtered, and then put online, right? So you have to be careful, neuroplasticity can work in your favor and if you don't use your brain, it can work against you. The ability of your brain to make new neural connections. I want you all and all my viewers to look up the video of a young girl from Haryana called Janvi Pawar. Pawar. Janvi Pawar. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. She's called India's Wonder Girl. Uh, she can speak eight different accents in English and I believe also some foreign languages. She is a young girl of 12 or 13 and she has given motivational talks to IAS officers and spoken at various forums and she has learned all these skills watching YouTube videos and practicing. There you go. What is your excuse? Your excuse is, sir, I also watch YouTube videos. I also spend a lot of time on my smartphone or my PC but I spend time on the things after which I have to clear out the history from my browser. <laughs> Life is a choice. What do you spend time on? You, those are the sort of results you're going to get into your life. If you spend time on improving yourself, there is no power in the world that can stop you, okay? So, early exposure. I saw, I was at Vaga Border, which is a wonderful attraction. Everybody who's uh, visiting Amritsar should go and watch the retreat ceremony. So I had this young kid who was selling uh, water, I believe, <clears throat> and some snacks. And he spoke basic sentences, not, not the full language, but basic 10 or 12 sentences in 8 or 10 languages. I don't have his video now, it was long back when we didn't have the smartphones at that point of time. He could speak in Spanish, he could speak in Italian, he could speak in English. Village guy! I said, where did you learn all this? He said, all the tourists, sir, they come here, they teach me. <laughs> Which means if you have the desire and the ability to learn, the world will teach you, provided you are ready. You're clear about these four stages, which are very, very important. There is no shortcut, let me remind you again and again. I want you to do two things. Number one, figure out where are you on this four stage process. Are you only on step two? Are you just aware and sitting there? Oh my God, I don't know English and I will never be able to learn English. Or I don't communicate well and I will never be able to communicate well. I want you to go to stage three. If you're in stage three and you think, I can't speak in, I always have to think before I speak. I'm very conscious, I have sweaty palms, I sweat a lot and things like that. That means you're in stage three, it's a good sign. After stage three is over, stage four is going to come in. 